Hey there guys, what is going on? Today we've got something a little bit different here. Today we are going to be talking about some of the hidden stats for a lot of the attachments in Modern Warfare. Now, there are a lot of these hidden stats that are getting slowly revealed to the community through tools like codgundata.com and this is the tool we're going to be using to reveal some of these data today. We're just going to be running some pretty generic gameplay in the background while we talk about some of these stats because there's actually some very, very useful things that do come from some of these attachments that you might not have thought of before. A special thanks to the man who did design Cod Gun Data. He does stream occasionally, so do go check him out on his live stream. Very, very cool little tool this is to check stats and other things. Like, you can really come up with some of the best sort of setups with actual statistical data rather than just being like, I think this attachment's better, but I'm not really sure why. So do go use this tool if you are interested in this kind of thing. Just before we do get into talking about some of these hidden stats in Modern Warfare, let's try and get this one to 25 likes. You guys have been absolutely fantastic for me recently. All the comments and likes really do let me know that you are enjoying the video. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you do leave a like and do subscribe if you are new around here. I would very much appreciate it and it would very much help me out. So let's start off here with some of our hidden stats in Modern Warfare. Okay, so starting us off with an attachment that most of us probably never use, but it's an interesting statistic nonetheless. Everybody knows that the lightweight suppressor does reduce our damage range by about 20% or so. It does say that in the statistics when you do look at the attachment in the menu, but that means it also reduces our bullet velocity by about 30%. Like, those sort of things do come together. If, if the damage range is a little bit shorter, that means the bullet must travel slower. So that's sort of basically just how physics works. It's pretty simple. I mean, physics isn't simple, but that idea is kind of simple. So that's basically how that works with that particular attachment. You lose a little bit of damage range, meaning your bullets would end up traveling slower. It's just one of those things. Most people in the game don't really use a lightweight suppressor though. So this is not going to be one that sort of game breaking, changing, sort of messing around with a lot of your class setups, but it's an interesting thing to keep in mind. Moving on to an actual game changer of an attachment. Everyone knows the monolithic suppressor is one of the best attachments in the game. Getting that little bit of extra increase to our damage range, about a 10% increase, is really significant for a lot of weapons. Like being able to fight at slightly longer distances is all Always a more powerful thing but because this does increase our damage range an increase to our bullet velocity does come along with this and it is about a 15% increase across the board like you throw on that monolithic suppressor your bullets travel further meaning they have to travel faster so on you do get a massive increase when you do throw on the monolithic suppressor it's sort of a little bit unconfirmed like sometimes I think this decreases or increases your hipfire spread depending on the weapon but that's sort of unconfirmed and sort of one of those stats that is sort of hard to miss hard to balance hard to check like it's one one of those things that I think is a thing, but we'll have to wait and see. Moving to another attachment that is an actual banger as well, the monolithic integral suppressor for the MP5 is another one that does have hidden stats. Again, this does give us sound suppression and also increases our bullet velocity. That stuff is known. I think it's about a 15 to 20% increase to our bullet velocity. Very, very powerful there. But again, this is one of those things that does increase our damage range as well. Bullets travel faster, so meaning they travel further. It's so again, simple-ish physics. Basically, you shoot the bullet faster, it'll end up traveling further, meaning you can do more damage at range. One of those things that, again, is very, very powerful on the MP5, being able to shoot our bullets and fight a little bit further out is always going to be super powerful. This sort of leads into sort of talking about ammo conversions and stuff like that, meaning if they do increase your damage range, that basically means they increase your bullet velocity as well. It's sort of a little bit unconfirmed, but basically looking at this over a whole, like everything that increases bullet velocity typically does increase your damage range and vice versa. Right, taking a look at the M4 now, the stock M16 Grenadier and the Corvus Custom Marksman do give us that basic very very powerful stats of damage range bullet velocity and of course recoil control this is known this is standard it does tell us this on the main menu but what it doesn't tell you is this does actually increase our hip fire spread so making it less effective at hip firing by about 80 percent for the stock m16 grenadier and 68 percent for the corvus custom marksman this can make our hip fire fights a little bit more difficult as it is sort of harder to get those shots on target with these longer barrels that are designed around fighting at range it makes sense that they do make it a little bit more difficult to fight up close just another one of those hidden stats that's sort of inconsequential but can sometimes come into gameplay when you are fighting at those close ranges you don't have time to aim down sight another one that i find a little bit lackluster is actually the rubberized grip tape the little cousin of the stipple grip tape nobody really ever uses the rubberized grip tape as it does make it a little bit easier to control our weapons i mean you can typically do the recoil control just by pulling down on your mouse or your right stick but this little handle does actually make it a little bit easier to hold our guns but by what percentage does it actually improve that recoil well, it's about 4%, which realistically is nothing. Like, 4% increase to anything is nothing, really. Like, 
You consider how much recoil goes into some of these weapons and 4% decrease, so that is really unnoticeable sometimes. You then compare to this to some of the other recoil controlling attachments like your Merc foregrips and so on, like your bigger barrels that do decrease our recoil spread by about 15, 20, 30% sometimes. So the rubberized grip tape really isn't worth it in a lot of situations as it does only increase our recoil control by about 4%. Right, the Merc foregrip, you guys know about this one by now. This has been floating around the community for a little while. The Merc foregrip does give us about a 15 to 18% increase to our recoil control, as well as reducing our hip fire spread by, I think, about 15%. But as people have discovered recently, this does give us an increase to our movement speed for some reason of about 4%. This is very similar to the bonus that we do get from the actual no stock. Like it's about a 4% increase either way, which is very, very interesting. This is supposed to be an attachment that's designed around recoil control, but I guess it's also designed around sort of close quarters fighting, which makes the movement speed increase actually make sense. Right, the no stock, as we have seen, did receive those nerfs to the actual recoil controlling aspect. And I think it decreases your ability to control that recoil by about 30% sometimes, which is, that's a lot. Like, that is significant. That's why we have seen a lot of those no stock classes sort of drop off the no stock unless they're being super, super aggressive. Now, typically the no stock always has given us that movement speed of about 4.4%, I believe. It's a little bit faster than the Merc foregrip bonus. It also increases our aim down sight speed by about 70 milliseconds, which is pretty significant. But... The no stock actually also does give us about a 20% increase to our aim down sight movement speed, which is actually like pretty wild. That's significant. Being able to move 20% faster while we are aiming down sight, once we get those sights up nice and quickly, we're able to move around the map very, very quickly while we are aiming, which is actually very, very powerful. That old school Stalker bonus is really significant. Stalker has been one of the best perks in previous Call of Duty games, and having a sort of reduced bonus on this particular attachment, despite its increased recoil control, which we can actually sort out with other attachments, is actually really significant this is a very very powerful attachment or perk for the no stock very very significant here but it also actually increases our hip fire spread by about 20 percent as well i think it's a 17 percent increase that's again significant always designed around these sort of close range fights getting nice and close to people being aggressive get that little bit of extra hip fire spread is very very powerful here like that's pretty cool always nice to see these bonuses come into some of the attachments that do have these flaws like that recoil control makes it a little bit better at being aggressive and so on I feel like they're actually moving toward, or Infinity Water actually moving towards a more sense of these attachments are specifically designed around close quarters, so it will make close quarters fighting easier across the board. Just because it says movement speed and aim down sight speed, it also might include bonuses to aim down sight movement speed and so on. Like, it's good that they are making these attachments sort of fit in together a specific playstyle, like whether you want to be slower or you want to be aggressive, they are making these attachments work in specific playstyles. Right, Commando Foregrip, which has been the favorite of a lot of Assault Rifle users recently. There's like that holy trinity of the monolithic suppressor, the, the longer barrel that does give those triple stat bonuses, and then the Commando Foregrip for that horizontal recoil. But noting this here, the Commando Foregrip does actually decrease our aim down sight movement speed by about 15%, which is actually significant. It does decrease our ability to move around the map quite quickly while we're aiming down sight and so on. Normally it does decrease our movement speed, so this is another one of those attachments that while it does say that it does decrease our movement speed, as I said, it doesn't say that it decreases our aim down sight movement speed, but it's sort of something that you can infer from context. Like movement speed across the board should be a more broad idea. It's not just when you're moving around or when you're sprinting around or so on. It does apparently mean movement speed across the board, which includes when you're aiming down sight. This is not actually the same decrease to our movement speed that it does get from like actual just regular movement speed, which is a bit weird. Like you would assume that it would be the same like the actual same number, if it does decrease our movement speed by 15%, it would be exactly the same, but it's a little bit different, so it's a bit weird. This actually does also increase our vertical recoil control, so it does make it a little bit easier to hit vertical shots. Like, as the weapon does bounce up, it's about a 6% increase to control, which is actually pretty significant, and it makes it a little bit easier to hit those shots. So if you have used the Commando Foregrip before, and you've felt like it's a little bit easier to hit those shots, even if it's controlling vertical recoil, that would be why. So what do I think should be done about this? Well, I feel like Infinity Ward knows the data here. Like they, they know this data. They have this in front of them. They know every single weapon stats and how each attachment does affect it individually. If somebody can make a program that does tell you these individual stats and they've worked out everything along with aim down sight speed and sort of diminishing returns from various aim down sight speed attachments, Infinity Ward has this data. They know what their attachments do or you would think so. And they should typically just add like whatever the attachment does in the listing. I mean, it might be a little bit interesting to see an attachment that does 
does decrease our movement speed also saying that it does decrease the aim walking movement speed like you might think that it double dips but i mean just to make it more clear to people what is actually going on with some of these attachments because some of these are significant changes like an 80 percent wider hip fire spread with the stock m16 grenadier that's actually significant that's near double that's pretty large like a 30 percent decrease to our bullet velocity with a specific attachment that's again one of those things that just should be in the game you should know these stats when you're putting these attachments on your weapon so they just need to add them it's as simple as that Anyway, guys, if there are any attachments that you do know of that do have specific hidden stats, do make sure to leave a comment letting me know what they are, and I might cover them in a second video if there are enough of them. Thank you very much for watching this one. Hopefully, you did enjoy this slightly different video talking about some of the more in-depth stuff in Call of Duty that you might not have known of. Make sure you do leave a like and do subscribe if you are new around here if you do want to see more of this kind of stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!